I was a little shocked at this clip here, guys. So Nick Fuentes, I mean, we covered the story. He was actually giving Trump a lot of credit the other week because he watched the debate. He saw when uh, Trump did his whole thing about the haste. They're eating the dogs. They're eating the cats. They're eating. They're eating the pets. He saw Trump say that. Um, very clearly, he was happy that Trump had gone full Nazi. You know, that lie literally came from a neo-Nazi group called Blood Tribe, and he was spreading it, and J.D. Vance was spreading it. So you saw Nick Fuentes get very happy with the Trump campaign in that moment, and he was giving him credit. And I said, oh, look, see, all it took was Trump acting more like a Nazi, and uh, Nick Fuentes, boom, he flipped, right? And he, now, then he was supporting Trump again. Well, he's gone back to the original script. You know, he's been very down on Trump. Why? Because... Trump is not being MAGA enough. He's not being America first enough. He's not being far right enough. He's not being white nationalist enough. Like, this is the gist of his issue with them. But now, uh, apparently, he memory hold or swept under the rug the whole uh, they're eating the, the cats thing. And uh, he says this. Here we go. In my opinion, if you're a Catholic, you can't vote for Trump. You cannot vote for somebody who is now frequently supporting abortion rights. Frequently. It seems like every week he supports abortion. Catholics should not support Trump. If you are anti-war, you cannot support Trump. Trump is the war World War III candidate. Trump is talking about wiping Iran off the map. That's where the war is going to go nuclear, not Ukraine. You can't vote for Trump. If you're an immigration restrictionist, you can't vote for Trump. They're not deporting any illegals. Okay, that's not happening. They admitted as much. And they're going to bring in more legal immigrants than ever before. And if you think there's some silver lining that we're going to get jobs in the Trump admin, maybe it's bad, but we're going to get in and fix it. Think again, because the personnel are going to be controlled by Jared Kushner. None of these people can vote for Trump. I'm calling on Catholics, anti-war supporters, immigration restrictionists, and MAGA loyalists to stay home and not vote for Trump. And if we go forward with any operations with Groyper War II, from now on, that is the goal. At one point, it was to get Trump's attention. Going forward, it's going to be to get people not to vote, period. There you have it. There you have it. I love how, so what we're witnessing from Nick Fuentes, he's doing the reverse Jimmy Dore, right? The Jimmy Dore perspective was like, I'm so leftist, I'm so pure, I'm so anti the Democrats for not being leftist and pure enough that I'll play footsies with Trump and say that Trump is out lefting Kamala, right? He's doing the reverse of that. He's doing the like, I'm so right wing, I'm so pure that Trump is not right wing and pure enough. So now I'm crusading for people not to vote for Trump, right? Now, I don't know if he's gone that next step. Actually, there are a couple clips of him flirting with Kamala, right? If flirting with her in the sense of like, hey, she's actually not that bad on this little thing, right? It, look, can we just call a spade a spade? Politics just breaks everybody's brain online. Like, so many people online just have terminal brain worms where they don't know up, up from down and left from right. They just can't find it, right? So let's go through Let's go through his specific arguments. Actually, first, let me say, hey, uh, thank you, Nick. Thank you for making this argument because, yes, I would like fewer and fewer people to vote for Trump. <laughs> and, you're, and you're, he's created like a Nazi purity test for Trump and he's not hitting the Nazi level enough, right? So, okay, cool. <laughs> like, I'll take it, right? But having said that, let's go through the specific arguments. So he says Catholics shouldn't vote for Trump um, because of abortion issues. And I find that argument not too persuasive because if you are pro-life, which candidate is going to be more pro-life, right? I mean, it's not difficult, right? Trump appointed the people to the Supreme Court who overturned Roe versus Wade. So you, Trump is right when he says you have me to thank for that. In other words, if you're pro-life, hey, Trump made it so that in like, what, nearly half the states... There are more restrictive abortion policies than there were prior to Roe v. Wade being overturned. It's over over like over a dozen states. You have near total abortion bans. So look, if you're pro-life, then you look at that and you go, that's a W. I like that. So thank you, Trump, for that. Now, presumably he's talking about Trump sort of indicating like that he wouldn't sign a national abortion ban. But here's the thing. It's sort of up in the air. Right? It's he sort of like waffled a little bit on that. It's not exactly clear what his take is. JD Vance said he, that Trump wouldn't sign a national abortion ban, and then Trump came out there and said, I never told JD anything on that. So it's kind of up in the air. Look, here's the reality. If we have to guess, and that's all we can do because we don't know, he hasn't really said, right? But if we had to guess what would actually happen, um, I think Trump probably would be okay with signing like a 15 week abortion ban, right? 
or a 20 week. Maybe he might go as early as like 12 weeks, but I'd say probably more like 15 to 20. And that Kamala and the Democrats would literally never do that. They just wouldn't, right? It's not happening. They are more likely to, if they somehow get the numbers. Kamala said we should get rid of the filibuster to codify Roe v. Wade, right? So I would bring back the rules that were in place during Roe v. Wade. It would basically uh, pass a law that makes up for the fact that there's no law now because it was Roe v. Wade was overturned as a right. So she would bring it back as regular legislation to make it the law of the land. So again, if you are pro pro uh, life, it's not really a question as to who's going to be more sympathetic to you and who's going to get the ball further down the field in your direction, right? So his analysis on this is just kind of silly like not giving Trump credit for overturning Roe v. Wade, not admitting that there actually is a chance he would sign a national abortion ban. He just wouldn't do it at like zero weeks or three weeks or six weeks. He would do it a little later if he does it at all, right? So, I, I mean, again, so that argument just doesn't really hold up. But I, I don't know even know why I'm bothering to go through this and go point for point because I don't want to talk him out of what he's doing now because what he's doing now is good in the sense that he's saying don't vote for Trump. <laughs> all right, um... Look, on the anti-war point, he's 100% right. Trump is not anti-war. It's always been bullshit. Um, you can fairly say both the Democrats and the Republicans are not anti-war. That is a fair thing to say. But it's also the correct thing to say that it is not equal. It is not equal. So in other words, it was Joe Biden that pulled out of Afghanistan. It was Joe Biden that massively reduced the drone war almost to the point of elimination. That's what Joe Biden did on the good side of his foreign policy, right? On the Trump side... I mean, it, it it was worse, right? And if you say, well, what about Gaza? It's like, yeah, but Trump is literally promising to be worse on Gaza. He wants to allow Israel to totally annex the West Bank. So imagine everything exactly as it is right now with the added factor of we're going to send Israel more money and more weapons and let them officially annex the West Bank. And Trump was just talking about literally striking Iranian nuclear facilities, which like cheerleading for that to happen. It might happen now too, right? It might happen now too, but it would be that plus annexing the West Bank plus more money, more weapons to Israel. So on the anti-war point, it's just true, right? It's a total misnomer that Trump is anti-war or anti-establishment. That's just not true. Like anybody who says that is lying to you. Uh, on immigration, um, he says, if you're an immigration restrictionist, you can't vote for Trump. See, that's kind of amazing to me because immigration seems like the one area where Trump actually means it and believes it, right? Like I think he's actually genuinely super duper anti-immigrant and he did a lot of anti-immigration stuff in his first term. Um... What Nick might know that many Republicans don't is that Democrats are not for open borders. They're also immigration restrictionists. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris deported more uh, people than uh, Trump did. Barack Obama deported more people than Trump did, right? So they're both, both Democrats and Republicans are immigration restrictionists. The question is, when all said and done with the totality of their policies, who's going to be further right? Who's going to be a more hardline anti-immigration person? And on that front, yeah, Trump, I think, is going to do that, right? I think there's no doubt, but he wants to do mass deportation, you know, even if he only gets... 10% or 20% of the mass deportation done, that's further to the right than what the Democrats would be. Uh, so doesn't really add up. And then finally, he talks about the personnel who are going to be controlled by Jared Kushner. See, this is classic Nick, like, gee, why did you pick Jared Kushner of all the people that you could have picked to say in that moment? Hmm, let me think about it. What is it about Jared Kushner that you don't like, Nick Foy says? <laughs> now, to be fair, of course, Jared Kushner, he literally took $2 billion from Saudi Arabia. $2 billion from Saudi Arabia. I mean, what a joke. What a disgusting, sick, sick joke, right? Super corrupt. That's obvious. Um, but if the broader point is, look, it's not going to be the sort of uh, white nationalist paleo conservatives that Nick Fuentes wants in the administration. That is true. You will more so get white nationalist, uh, white nationalist neoconservatives and neoliberals. Not definitely not paleocons. Right. So that point is true. So anyway, as I said, uh, never get in the way of your opponent self-immolating. And that's exactly what's happening here. Telling more and more people not to vote for Trump. By all means, uh, on the broader point there, I agree. Might have some disagreements on the on the particulars of his worldview here. But uh, there you have it. Hey, y'all do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.